I don't know. I'd say I'm reasonable. Okay, that's completely unreasonable. You have no idea just how reasonable I have been. Reasonable synonyms are sensible, rational, practical, fair, appropriate. Fit, fitting, suitable, logical. All things I would definitely say describe me. Do they describe you? Welcome to I'm Reasonable with Zaynab Johnson. I'm reasonable. <laughs> reasonable <laughs> hey everybody hey welcome to another episode of honest oh oh i almost said honest tea with z for those who listen to honest tea with z uh you understand why i almost said that um but this is not that uh although it's pretty much the same because it's all me um except with this podcast we kind of focus on like, are we being reasonable? That's what we're questioning. You know, it's like, it's me and I'm telling the truth, of course, uh, to the best of my knowledge and ability. Um, but we are looking at everything from a scope of like, is this reasonable? Are we being reasonable? So welcome <laughs> to another episode of I'm Reasonable with Zainab Johnson. I am Zainab Johnson. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you watch last week's, last week's episode, I did have some technical difficulties, yo, when I was editing, when I was editing and I saw that my last couple of moments uh, were corrupted and there, yo, <laughs> you know, that's why sometimes, I mean, aside from me, like doing all of this on my own and kind of learning as I'm going, you know, part of like the fun in hiring someone is when something goes wrong, there's still the frustration of something not being right or something messing up, essentially. But you ain't got to take the blame for it. Me, I was I was like, what did I do? What was I not aware of? And I mean, the reality is I'm just setting up a camera and a microphone and I'm just and then and then I'm going through my content, you know, and I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> but if you listen to the original one, which did not upload everything, um, and I had to re-upload it to YouTube, and then you came back to listen to, to figure out what, because it was basically the last parts of like Ask Z. Um, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, and beyond that, beyond those technical difficulties, I did feel like it was a pretty good episode. So if you haven't listened, if this is like your first, if this is your inter introduction to I'm Reasonable with Zainab Johnson, then definitely check out, check out, uh, the previous episodes. I, I believe there's like 10 episodes before this. Now I can't wait to the day where I can't remember how many episodes I've done, you know, um, by that time we'll have like a producer and an engineer and all of that, hopefully. Um, let's get into my dates really quick I, so, because I want you guys to come see me. I want you guys to come see me live. Um, it, it really, it really helps. I am trying to, all the cities that I'm, that I'm coming to have either been heavily requested. Um, I mean, that's what it is. They've been heavily requested. And so if you are requesting me and then I give you what you say you want, you got to come out and see me. Um, if I do list cities and you are not in those cities, but you know that my comedy is fire, uh, then hit up your people in those cities or surrounding areas and let them know, like, this is somebody you got to see. And you want to see her while her ticket prices are still like in a $25, $30 range. You don't want to wait till them tickets get to a buck 50, them, them tickets to, to Dave Chappelle level tickets. Them tickets become Renaissance level tickets. And you like, damn, them Renaissance level tickets. And then she not posting no more clips. And so you ain't got no access. So uh, May 15th, I'll be in Portland. May 23rd through the 26th, Jacksonville, Florida. That's a holiday weekend. No excuse. Come see me. Jacksonville, May 23rd through the 26th. June 13th and 14th, Nashville, Tennessee. June 21st and 22nd, San Francisco. July 18th, Columbus. July 19th and 20th, Cleveland, Ohio. July 24th, I'll be back in Los Angeles. August 22nd through the 24th, Chicago, Illinois. September 13th and 14th, Bloomington, Indiana. September 19th and 21st, Washington, D.C., September 27th and 28th, St. Paul, Minneapolis. October 17th through the 19th, Philadelphia. October 25th and 26th, Detroit. And November 19th 
through the 23rd, I'll be in London. Um, and so make sure you guys get those tickets. Uh, a lot of them are on sale right now. And if they are not, just keep checking back. Of course, I will post and let you guys know when they are on sale. Um, and of course, I'll be adding more cities. So don't fret. Like if this is a city close to you and you know you're not in a major city, then come to the show, you know. Um, but if you're like, wait a second, I'm not going to drive to you know, LA, cause she ain't, I'll be in Houston. I'll be in, or, but like San Diego, I may not get back to San Diego this year. So you may have to come up, you know, it's okay. We've made the drive. Um, <clears throat> and I appreciate you. All right. While I have you guys, um, like, Hit the like button, you know, hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that you guys know immediately when I am posting anything and everything on this platform. What's up with Z? Let's get right into it. So I was watching my friend Gabrielle Dennis's show. If you're unfamiliar with Gabrielle Dennis, she is a phenomenal actress. I while Gabrielle can do um, drama like Gab Gabrielle's a trained actress, dancer, singer like she is a triple threat quadruple threat. She's also beautiful. Um, she's also nice. Like, I mean, Gabrielle's a full package, right? Um, and she, uh, she does drama very well, but I personally love her comedic acting. She, she just knows how to do things that, in my opinion, she knows how to play the text, in my opinion, in a way that a lot of people don't. Um, if uh, right now, Gabrielle is starring on a show, an Apple TV show called Big Door Prize. That's the re that's what I was watching because my friends on a show. If you haven't seen it, you know, feel free to check it out. I'm not getting paid for any of that. Um, but if you and, and I think most people like Gabrielle, maybe like in the very recent past, a lot of people know her from Black Lady Sketch Show, which was on HBO. To me, she was like a standout. But but beyond be, besides Quinta first season, she was like a standout. Um and they all great. All the women are great, obviously. But Gabrielle is like, because she, whatever, I won't go into it, but she's great. A lot of people know her from, I think, what they believe her first job is, which was, dang, I can't think of it now. It was either with Tia or Tamara. It was with one of the Maori twins, one of the sister sisters. And it was like a spinoff of Girlfriends. It was about the um, football team. It was, I think it originally started on like UPN and then it went to BET. But it was, it was a huge show um, from Mara Brock Akil, who is also a very talented creator. Um... But the first time I saw Gab Gab Gabriel, the first time I saw Gabrielle was on a sketch show, a, sh a sketch show for Showtime, which I can't recall the name right now. I should have looked all of this up, but forgive me. I'm just speaking from the heart. Um, and it was Damon Wayans Sr. had a sketch show on Showtime. Um, and Gabrielle was, if she wasn't the only woman on the show, she was like one of two. And she was great. That was my first introduction to her. Then I met her like, I don't know, I was auditioning for like a live sketch group or something like that. And she was also auditioning like when I first moved to L.A. Um, and I have recognized her from that show. And she was so like kind and nice. And we have been friends ever since. Anyway, Gabrielle is doing an amazing job on this show, Big Door Prize, which is based on a book. Um, basically, this like machine shows up in this town and kind of gives people a card that says what, what their potential is and changes potentially the course of this town's life, right? Anywho, Gabrielle uh, and the other lead guy, I don't know, I think he's like Irish or something like that. You know, this guy, I don't know his name, sorry, but he, um, you know, we, we've seen him in a lot of like romantic comedies. You know, he's like the tall, goofy, lovable romantic comedy guy. Um, anyway, they're married in the show. And I noticed as I'm watching the first few episodes of the second season, I noticed that whenever there is or rather I had the thought whenever there is an interracial couple on TV or film and they have like a new love interest for whatever reason. Right. Not to spoil anything, but for whatever reason, when a new love interest comes into play, whether it's just um, somebody that's interested in them, their relationship is breaking up, they're cheating, whatever the case is, um, they always go back to the original ethnicity. And I'm like, never have I seen, if you guys have seen, put it in the comments, but never have I experienced on film or television where you see an interracial couple and then when they go beyond that coupling to someone new 
whether in a positive way or negative way, it's not another interracial relationship. And I don't under, I just don't understand that. It's like, yeah, let's keep it going. If we already making this interracial love, like, let's keep it going. Right. I date. Uh, I mean, I've, I've dated people of multiple backgrounds. Uh, that makes it sound like I'm just dating a whole bunch of people. No. Um, but I have dated more than one white guy. Um, and one of them I, who I really liked, actually, and him and I are actually in touch today. <clears throat> I remember and this is like Italian white guy, you know, from Boston, like, you know, the very uh I don't want to say uh, specific, specific type. Um, and I remember when we first started talking, he was like, yeah, I only date black women. And that was shocking to me. Not because black women aren't great. Of, I mean, you know, I'm going to root for the home team. But I always find it kind of strange when someone says only in regards to dating and that only isn't identified as their same ethnic makeup. Like if I said I only date black men, it's like, all right, you may be limiting your potential for um, viable partnership. You may be limiting your potential for like, I don't know, a really special person out there that happens to not be black. But okay, I get it. It's like you black. You black and you want to only date somebody black? Like, I get that. But if I'm like, I only date white guys, I would be like, okay, let's unpack this, you know, and vice versa. Like, if some, like, as I said, he was a white guy, it was like, no, I only, and he explained it to me too. Even, even in his explanation as a black woman, never have I felt this, but they, you know, when he said that to me, I felt like a slight pressure. You know, like, oh, my God, am I black enough? Am I am I meeting the standard of the black women that he's had and will have, you know, like, which is crazy. You know, it sounds crazy. It sounds rather unreasonable when I say it out loud, but I'm just being honest. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> my question in What's Up With Z is, um, If they start, if they start a story, if they give us a narrative of an interracial couple, when we experience a new version of that couple, should it remain like interracial or like, let's say this character, let's say these characters, like, let's say her next love interest or somebody else, this whatever, let's say that he's um, another white guy and then another white guy or with him, you know, the lead guy on Big Door, Pri- Big Door Prize or any other show. Let's say it's like, oh, another black woman, another black woman, another black woman. Like, do, do we then question, like, is it fetish, fetish, fetishizing, 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 <laughs> fetishizing, Whew. um, you know, like, uh, is the, are, are we caught between a rock and a hard place or, I don't know. I don't know. Is is my line of thinking like, is it a reasonable ask rather um, that they keep the, that they, if they're going to, if they're going to push the interracial narrative, that they keep it going? Um, and then is it unreasonable if they do keep it going for us to be like, why they ain't never putting her with no black guy? Why? Well, he only like black, like what, 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 what's, why does my tone change? <laughs> I don't know. You guys let me know and had, you know, put it in the comments and make sure that you hashtag it with what's up with Z so that I know what you're referencing. Um, now let's get into this week's reasonable or unreasonable first story. Uh, are you guys familiar with Sunna Girl? Um, if you, if you are, if you are familiar, then you're probably aware of what I'm about to talk about. If you're like me and what I'm about to talk about is your introduction, then, uh, here's a little brief synopsis, um, of Summer Girl, Stunner Girl, Summer Girl, Stunner Girl. I mean, that's a good name too, right? Summer Girl. Like she only come out when it's hot. Ow. Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> Stunner Girl's name is Suzanne Shade Brown, which already I like. I love a middle name. A middle name just legitimizes things, right? Like Suzanne Brown sounds like. I don't know. She could be like a mid-level employee, corporate employee, you know, with like pictures of her life taped up in her cubicle. But when you add the Sade in the middle, it sounds official, right? It sounds like she could be running for office, you know, like, I don't know, like what's, what's one, of, what's her, sl- <laughs> we don't just do it. We do it right. Suzanne Sade Brown for Student body president. I don't know. (laughs) Your child is our child. Suzanne Sade Brown for school district president. (laughs) Kentaji ain't the only Brown that could get shit done. Suzanne Sade Brown running for state senate. Uh, Whatever. Anyway, Suzanne Sade Brown, also known as Stunner Girl, is a rapper from Sacramento. She was performing recently, and um, when she was on stage, she a guy in the audience actually reached up and smacked her behind, smacked her ass, um, and then he got beat up. Let's watch the video. So you see him smack it. You see her look and she's trying to maintain her composure, but she did not like that. And then she goes and tells, then she goes and tells, um, I guess whoever this guy is with her, I don't want to say that that's her love interest, but watch this. He got on my nerves. It's like, I don't agree with violence at all, but somebody smacks a woman that you're with, somebody smacks her bear at, and I don't want to read in the comments, um, you know, like, well, her ass was out. Listen, here's the thing, and I got to say this before I continue playing the rest of this video. Um, it, It does not matter if a woman is walking outside while it is considered indecent exposure, you don't have the right to touch anybody's person. It does not matter if you are male. It does not matter if you are female. It does not matter if you are other. It does not matter how undressed she is or dressed she is, how provocative her body is, how voluptuous her body is, how how much power you think she has or does not have. It does not matter if she is in a performance state or not. You do not have the right nor the permission to touch anybody. The one with the hat, he really got on my nerves because while this is what I was going to say, while I don't condone violence, somebody touch a woman's butt that you're with, you know, why are you getting in his face and talking? What is all of that bump? What's all this kissing the forehead? And like, what you going, like, you should order, are, like, are you her man? Are you her brother? Are you her friend? Are you security? If you're any of those things, you should be automatically swinging or just have him removed. But why you jump down off the stage and then just start tongue kissing, like like kissing his forehead, like, like, you know, bumping foreheads. Then the bouncer, well, who somebody who appears to be actual security, comes out and snatches him up from behind. And then you want to fight while he's already down. You can't be a part of the squad. I don't know who you are, but you are not valuable. You're not valuable in this situation. While this little skinny guy who smacked her butt, um, he is completely wrong. Completely wrong. There's no way around it. Um, Completely unreasonable. The choice he made. And then you saw him hold up the camera, like tape himself. Like, yeah, I just did that. Look what I just did. It's like, no, you deserve your ass beat. What Tony Roberts say, you need your ass beat. (laughs) But he got up swinging. He got up swinging. And security trying to get the one with the hat off of him because it's like, bro, you wasn't trying to throw hands at nothing until he was down. Uh, uh. 
Then she comes. You realize she's off stage. It's like, wait, who's performing? <laughs> she's off stage and she decides to to beat him up. And I don't know, you guys, was was this I don't want to play the whole thing because it's just like it's just, you know, um, if I fast forward to the end, actually. The little boy don't seem super phased. He seemed, re- he, I mean, they're making an announcement, don't touch the artist, which is, to me, it's kind of crazy that you have to make that announcement. You know, like, of course, don't, like, don't touch the artist just like you wouldn't touch somebody when you ride in a bus, right? Like, when you walk in through the post office, I always got a post office analogy. When, when you, you know, when you, strolling down a path a path in a park you're not just gonna reach out and touch somebody right I mean you shouldn't so what about them being on stage in costume scantily clad costume but costume nonetheless what would make you think that it's okay to touch her unless she was unless she bent over in front of you and was like go ahead smack it go ahead smack it then I'd be like all right I mean you know it was like when that whole fiasco when Cardi B was like, can somebody throw some water? Can somebody throw some water? And then the girl threw too much water or something like that. And Cardi B threw her mic. It's like, okay, I feel like there was some gray area there. Like I couldn't really tell who was being reasonable, unreasonable. But this, anywho, this young man seemed rather unfazed. Um, and so, you know, we don't need to see a whole bunch. But do, do you guys think that... Um, Do you think that it was reasonable for them to beat him up in a way that they did? Um, do you think that it was a reasonable response to what he did? Um, and like the sequence of events, like I'm I, I'm not going to pose stupid questions. I'm not going to pose like an unreasonable question. Right. Like, yeah, he deserves his ass beat. He deserved his ass to be, he deserved to be reprimanded. He deserved to be escorted out because he clearly is not conducting himself in a way that is appropriate, even in a setting where maybe some people feel like is an inappropriate setting. Even still, he wasn't conducting himself in an appropriate way. However, all right, security comes and I always think it's security's job to remove somebody. I don't think it's necessarily security's job to uh, just just like just like it's not the pol- it's not a police officer's job to brutalize you. It's not a police officer's job to beat you up. It's a police officer's job to arrest you. It's a police officer's job to stop you from committing whatever alleged crime you're committing. It's a police officer's job to detain you in the same way that it's security's job. But I don't know if it's a police officer's job to beat you down with a baton for an hour or even five minutes to get on you, choke you, kneel on your back, et cetera, et cetera. And so with these security guards and ultimately the friend, like the guy with the hat, who is like, I would, I would call he a clown, a clown. Would you, like, what was you saying? I wish we had the audio. What was you saying? And I imagine what the other boy was saying, which is probably very ignorant, you know, like, well, her, 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 her butt is out there because a lot of men don't know that just because a woman's, you see her cleavage, you see her butt cheeks, you see whatever, you see her thighs, you don't know that that's not for you to touch. In the same way, you know, like you ever, I'm, sometimes I'm like in a restaurant or a bakery and they have cupcakes on display and I love cupcakes. The cupcakes look delicious, but I don't take my hand. And grab the cupcake until I purchase it. Me purchasing it is my permission to then touch the cupcake. This is simple. So I'm asking you guys, was it unre- Was the, the beating he got in the way that he got it, was that unreasonable? Let me know. Um, the second one, second story, second and last story. So the 2024 White House correspondent uh, dinner happened um, and you know, of course, what makes the news and the blogs and everything like that is Joe Biden's like j- jokes on Trump. Trump's so desperate, he started reading those Bibles he's selling. 
Colin Jost was the host, I believe. Colin Jost is from um, The Weekend Update with Michael Che on SNL. He's also, you know, I know men by who they attach to, the women they're attached to. So, like, his biggest credit for me is he's married to Scarlett Johansson. Um, but he was hosting, and, of course, he had some jokes, too. How refreshing it is to see a president of the United States at an event that doesn't begin with a bailiff saying, all rise. <laughs> I love a good joke. I love a good joke. I love a good joke. However, yo, this election is cr like all jokes aside, literally all jokes aside. So what I'm hearing all jokes aside, because this election is concerning and it doesn't seem like anyone Anybody from either side, even the educational podcast that I listen to, the, the Angela Rise, the, nobody seems like they're putting out while they're being very informative, while they're giving like, you know, uh, passioned opinions. I'm not really hearing viable solutions to the problem of we don't like none of them. Both of them seem rather unreasonable. And so why are we even here? What I'm hearing, especially from college age people, is the lack of motivation. Um, and I was re the, the lack of motivation, um, which is important. That's what gets people out. You got to get people energized to go vote. Right. Um, so I'm going to. So forgive me. I'm going to be referencing my notes a lot because whenever I'm speaking about um things that are, I don't want to say less opinion based and more fact based. I want to make sure that I get them correct. Um, and so I'll be referencing this a lot. So what we can like, what we can agree on, right? Is that both. So right now in 2024, we are heading towards a presidential election in the United States of America. And we are currently in a two party system. We have been since this country's inception, right? Um, and what is factual is they're both old, they're both privileged, um, in the systemic imbalance that is our society, right? They're both frauds, <laughs> But the narrative is that you have to vote for one because this is a two party system. You have to vote for one. You have to vote for one. And most people occupying the space that I am in are 100 percent against Trump, at least at least front facing, you know, like in your face. They're like, oh, Trump, boo, boo, boo. Who knows? Who knows what people do when it's just them and that little curtain and that big ass iPad in the voting booth. Right. But for the most part, people aren't energized by Biden, Biden, and it seems like his only play is this guy's bad, right? Like we can all agree that this guy's pretty bad. The thing that sucks about that is like a lot of people are like, mm, actually, he's he's not that bad. And also you're pretty bad. And people who thought that Biden was like better are like, you're not seeming so good either. Anyway, his narrative, his his campaign's narrative is a vote against me is a vote for him, which completely makes you feel like you can't vote for uh, like an end. You can't vote for it. Like it makes you feel like you can't vote for an independent, you know, which it's like, how how can you say how can every person out there push um, your vote counts and then say, well, when I vote against you, but not for your major opponent, that vote doesn't count and essentially is a vote for your major opponent. Um, they also say if you sit on the couch, that's a vote for Trump as well. So it's like, if you don't like both people, and which is me, I'm not, I mean, obviously I dislike one more than the other. I just, I think one is much more, um, 
and I can just say it, I, I do think that Trump is much, much more dangerous. But it, it's really hard, though, because like, when you know both people are frauds, then it's kind of hard to, like, operate within reason because you're already dealing with the unreasonable situation, you know? But if you're like me and you really want to be done with a two-party system, then what's the solution? What's the, what's the solution? And I believe that some things can't be repaired. That's why the conversation of reparations always goes nowhere because aside from the expensive bill that this country does not want to pay, forget the acknowledgement, forget the acknowledgement. If it was just about acknowledgement and there was no bill attached to the acknowledgement, oh, people would be talking about, yeah, we sorry, we sorry, we sorry. <laughs> but that bill is a very expensive bill that they don't want to have to pay. Also, all of the people talking about, well, this is the bill, this is the bill. There's no um, cohesiveness. There's no agreed upon uh, bill on what should be paid to who and how. I do believe that the burden um, is always on the candidate trying to be reelected. So this year... The burden is on Biden to pr to prove that he um, is can do it four more times. Like like it's it, that it's better for us to stay with him for four years. And what he's done or not done is very fresh in our minds. You know, there's a few exceptions, like the candidates that are really likable, regardless of their like political um, party. Obama, obviously, Clinton, uh, Kennedy, if he wasn't assassinated, even um, even Ronald Reagan, you know, really likable candidates. They don't really have to prove that they're it, like 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 their level of proving that they that, that the burden rather is not really heavy for them. Right. It's just like in 2020, the burden was on Trump. The burden was on Trump to prove that he could get us through what was a very trying time a global pandemic. And I think people was like, oh, you know, he providing STEMI checks, which is so ignorant because he ain't providing nothing. Uh, STEMI checks, oh, you know, he done this and da, 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 you know, whatever, whatever, whatever their reasons for liking him, right? When he was like, and also, yeah, you want to, you want to, you, you don't want COVID, drink bleach or you got COVID, drink bleach. I think that's when everybody was like, oh, wait, because it don't matter how dumb you are. It don't matter how ignorant you are. It doesn't matter how uh, um, unmotivated you are to seek out your own information. Everybody know. Everybody, you know when somebody got to make up for everybody. <laughs> everybody knows you can't drink bleach. And I think that's when, everybody, that, that's when most people, the majority of people was like, okay, we can't, we can't stand for this. I mean, enough of us have done laundry in our life to know good and well, you can't drink bleach. And that's when he wasn't a, you know, he couldn't carry the burden of reelection. Um, this year, like I said, the burden is on Biden. Um, and Biden's biggest hill, in my opinion, his biggest hill is funding the Israeli government as the body count of dead Palestinians grows to an unconscionable amount. I think at this point it's like 30,000 people and we all understand war, right? Like nobody, I can't really get into the weeds of like who started it, whose fault is it? I, I, that, that, I can't get into that, right? But I know that what's happening is wrong on a horrifically, a horrific basic, it's horrifically wrong on a basic human level. Now, the United Nations voted for a permanent ceasefire. Every single poll in the United States, online, in person, on college campuses, everything, right? Um, every poll, the majority in America is saying that they want this, they need this to stop. Biden himself was like, I called Benjamin and said, Benjamin and Yahoo, I called him and said, please, no, please stop. So if you called him and was like, you got to stop, don't do this. Why are you sending money? That's the problem. That's what, that's what young people, that's what people, that's what young people and people in general are having a hard time under, understanding. It's like, wait, you supposed to be 
the most powerful person. You're supposed to hold the most powerful seat in the world and you send in money to someone for something that you completely disagree with. And that the majority of the people who you are supposed to represent disagrees with where they do that at. (laughs) And that's on a, that, that is on a visceral level, right? That, that not trying to understand how you moving is on a, on a visceral level. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I was teaching. Um, and I remember when I would drive to work one morning, I stopped, I would always stop at the 7-Eleven and, uh, to get like a coffee, banana, whatever. One morning I stopped at the 7-Eleven and there was an unhoused guy out front and he said, could I help him? Could I give him some money to help him with breakfast? And, you know, this being kind of like a cashless world, essentially, you know, I did not have any real cash on me. And so when I went inside the 7-Eleven, aside from the things that I got for myself, I got him the same exact thing. You know, I got him a banana, I got him a water and I got him a coffee. And that is like, that may be like minimal breakfast, some people think, but like, you know, if you're not eating anything, then I don't know. I would imagine that that's something that I would be grateful for. But I went out uh, before getting in my car. I gave it to him and I was like, here you go. You know, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you're able to, you know, get a little bit more sustenance. He didn't take it. (laughs) He was like, I don't want that. I wanted some beer. And ultimately, I have the right to choose to support his what he wants for breakfast or not. Of course, I chose not to because in my mind, I'm like, well, it's my money. And I don't have to give my money to something that I don't agree with. So you ain't getting my money. But the United States funding Israel is not as simple as me being generous or ungenerous with the unhoused guy on my way to work. Right. And I I say that because the the question when I hear when I hear like, Uh, People put a camera when I hear journalists and others put cameras in people's faces at these protests, whether they're at protests, you know, on a highway in Chicago, protests across campuses in the United States, protests at, you know, Capitol buildings, et cetera, et cetera. You know, people always like just why I don't understand why are you sending the money? Why are you sending the money in the most simplest form? And this is very hard to understand. So that's why I'm not coming to you guys as, as an expert. I'm just sharing you guys what's, hap- what's happening in my mind. Cause I find a lot of times what I am trying to understand, a lot of people who, a lot of people out there are also trying to understand the same thing. Um, and that's by design. All of this political stuff, it is by design for us to not understand it. If they wanted us to understand it on a very deep level, they teach it in school for free. In the most simplest form, the U.S. aids Israel's government, not Israel's government. They aid Israel's military. Okay, very specifically, it don't matter if they say for whatever reason, oh, they passing a bill. They 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 approved aid for one billion, two billion, 15 billion, whatever the amount is. The bulk of that is and has always been to aid their military specifically. Now, the way they aid their military is they give them the money to buy U.S. great, I mean, to buy uh, uh, weapons, but they're U.S. great weapons, which means they're weapons that we produce as the United States. So we send Israel the money. Israel then buys weapons from us to aid their military. So essentially the money it's coming back to us. And it's just a it's just a cycle of war, a cycle, a cycle that feeds the um, the ongoing attempt to have power and control over everything and everybody. And that starts with the land that people are on. Uh, the land in, in this particular case um, is obviously Palestine, Israel. Um, And you know what? So people talk about it like, oh, you know, that they're fighting because they're, uh, I'm even hesitant. I I never feel right even saying fighting because at this point is, it's like the boy who grabbed the girl's butt. Yeah, he was dead wrong, but is this a fair fight? And who, 
Again, I said I don't want to get into the weeds of it. Um, but this Palestinian Israeli land uh, represents a historical significance for um, not just Jewish people and Muslim people, which is crazy. Why in this in 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 the um, in the conversations and in all the passion and the grief that we experience by way of our news and by way of the people we follow on social media and even the people who reach directly out to me and say, Zainab, please speak up, please speak up, speak up. And it's not, and, and I know they're not coming to me like speak up because you are a reasonable human being. Speak up because you identify as Muslim. That's why I want you to speak up, which is crazy because Palestine, Israel, is not just the holy land, the supposed holy land for Muslims and Jews. It is also a holy land for Christians as well. But Christians ain't in the conversation. I don't know how, but Christians somehow have escaped this entire conundrum. After World War II, the U.S. and Europe created NATO. Um, basically we stand together. So if if y'all, if you, you either come to, you know, like we better, we better together. Right. And so if anybody that's not a part of NATO, anybody that's not an ally, if they hit you, that mean they hit, they, 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 they hit me too. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like going and it's like, Oh, I, you know, like you, 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 you could fight me, but just know if you try to fight me, you got to fight my seven brothers too. So you sure you want this smoke? That's basically what NATO is, right? Israel is not a part of NATO, but it is an ally. It's a non-NATO ally. Um, but if you think, if you think that the U.S. or Europe gives a shit about who's entitled to this holy land, <laughs> if you think that that's what they really care, if you think that that's what they care about and that's why they're funding the Israeli government, if that's what you think, then... They do not care at all. But let's just look at it because I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. I don't want to, you know, but let's just look at it. Where is Palestine, Israel located? What is it next to? What is it next to you guys? It's next to Saudi Arabia. It's next to Syria. It's next to Iran. It's next to Iraq. It's next to Afghanistan and then all the other stands. And when we get past them stands, what's right next to it? Russia. It is in the best interest of the United States, according to the people who have held political power in this country since the beginning, to have some sort of control over that land. It is in the best interest of the United States. Not us, the people of the United States, but the United States as a body of government, as a ruling power on this earth. Europe as well, it is in their best interest to have some control over that land. So while it's simple to say, just stop. And I agree with that. That's me. I'm out here like, I mean, just, I don't get it. Just, I was, I was naive. I was one of those naive people like, oh, okay. The United Nations, they all voted and was like, it's going to be a ceasefire. And it, I was, I was naive too. I was naive as well. So while it is simple, to say that, the truth is, and it's the truth that they ain't never, never going to give us real access to, if any access at all, that they have to do it. They have to continue to fund Israel. And this is what Biden is battling with. So for me, this election is the first election that the first election that I have been able to vote in that I'm really having trouble with it. I'm, I mean, I'm really, really, <laughs> there's a clip of uh, Tracy, Tracy uh, Morgan as Tracy Jordan in 30 Rock. This best, this best describes where we're at. No matter what, black Americans are going to always vote Democrat. They will, won't they? Mm-hmm. Unless. Black people don't vote. Just don't do it. No matter the time it takes for you to vote, you can play three games of pool. Three. And that's fresh. And no one, while they're talking about it, 
and trying their best to educate us and convince us no one has given a viable solution to this. Or rather against this. Okay, lastly, Ask Z. Before I get out of here, let's hop right into it. You guys, send me your Ask Zs. You can either send them to Zaynab Comedy VIP at Gmail. You can always send me DMs on Instagram, or you can put them right in uh, your comments in this podcast. Make sure that you guys send me some Ask Zs, and we'll decide if you're being reasonable or unreasonable. Uh, this Ask Z this week reads as, Hey, Zaynab, love the show. And yes, I've been asking on a daily basis. Oh, am I being reasonable? I think that's a typo. Am I being reasonable? Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening and and kind of doing like the work, you know? Um, I'm an only child to a single mother who I have a very close relationship. I would call us besties, but I have an aunt that will fight me for... <laughs> but I have an aunt that will fight me for that position. So for now... I'll say my mom is one of my favorite people to be around. You know what? My mom is one of my favorite people as well. She be getting on my nerves, but she's one of my favorite people. Uh, she gets on my nerves in a way that moms do, and it's not going to stop because they feel so entitled. And I guess they are. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yes, she raised me. Yes, she sacrificed much of her early adulthood to make sure I had every experience my heart desired. And now that I'm a reasonably successful adult, I try to pay my mom back in the ways that she expresses. Two years ago, she started expressing her desire for breast implants. Uh, I wasn't, why did I get so, breast implants. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure where this was coming from, but my mother is a woman in her late 50s and on social media. Oh, and she's on social media. So I figured it's the same pressure to quote unquote look good or quote unquote be sexy that we all get inundated with. After some research and long conversations, I gifted my mom with a boob job last year for her birthday. They look good. She had no health complications and she seems much more confident. My only problem is, right, what's the, what's the problem? Uh, my only problem is, no, oh, I think they meant to say now. My only problem is now she dresses more revealing. <laughs> Much more revealing. So she reiterated that. Much more revealing. Every top is a deep V or a scoop neck. But what bothered me the most is the other day we were at the museum and she had on a tank with no bra. No bra, Z. <laughs> I like when y'all be writing, like y'all like talking right to me. Like I just, <laughs> no bra, Z. Like we friends sitting on the couch. Like, girl, can you believe it? No bra. I'm trying to give my mom grace, but I want to tell her, put those things away. Am I being unreasonable? <laughs> you know what? Before I answer this, I'd like to hear what everybody uh, listening thinks. Is she being unreasonable? Should, 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 should she tell her mom like, or, or, or is it reasonable for her to be like, you know, I know you're feeling more confident. I'm happy. I gifted it to you. So I aided you in this experience. Um, but put them things away. Is she being reasonable or unreasonable, you guys? Hashtag it in the comments with Ask Z. And then I will give my opinion. Because I'm like, I don't want to sway their opinion. I'll give my opinion on the next episode. Until then, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Get those tickets to my show. The link is in the details of this podcast. Until next time, this is I'm Reasonable with Zainab Johnson. And I will talk to y'all later.